In this video, we will be discussing the solution to the factor tree problem from Coach of April Long Challenge 2020. In this problem, we are given a tree with n nodes and n minus 1 edges. In this case, n is equal to 10. The nodes are numbered from 1 to n. Then each node is given a value. For example, node 1 is given a value of 2 and node 2 is given a value of 9. Then we are given q queries and each query consists of integers u and v. Say u is equal to 6 and v is equal to 7. We need to consider the path from node u to node v. So the path from node 6 to node 7 will be this. We will have to multiply all the values of the nodes which are lying on this path. So let's say x is equal to 8 which is the value of node 6 into 9 which is the value of node 2 into 2 which is the value of node 1 into 7 and into 5 where 5 is the value of node 7. We need to return the number of factors that x has. So first let's discuss how do we find the number of factors of a number. We start off with prime factorizing the number. So let's prime factorize x. So x will be equal to 2 power 4 into 3 square into 5 into 7. The number of factors will be 4 plus 1 into 2 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 and 1 plus 1 where 4 is the power of the first prime factor 2 is the power of the second prime factor and 1 and 1 are the powers of the other prime factors a factor of x can have either 2 power 1 as its factor 2 power 2 as its factor 2 power 3 or 2 power 4 as its factor or it need not have 2 as its factor. So that is why this prime factor 2 will contribute 4 plus 1. And so the number of factors of a number is the product of 1 plus the power of its prime factors. Now that we know how to calculate the number of factors of a number, let's come back on how we can solve this problem. The constraint given for n here is 10 power 5 and the constraint for q is also 10 power 5. Now say for every query, we magically have the prime factorization of the product of all the numbers which is in the path from u to v. So what will be the complexity of finding the answer for that query? The constraint given for the value at each node, ai, is less than or equal to 10 power 6. The maximum number of nodes in the path from u to v can be 10 power 5. And so their product can have 10 power 5 different prime factors. And iterating over these 10 power 5 prime factors for a single query is slow. So what do we do? Let's say we have product of numbers x. And we already know the answer for this x. That is, now answer will store the number of factors which is present in x. Now let's say we want to multiply another number to x. Let's say we multiply x with some number t. We also need to modify our answer so that now answer stores the number of factors of xt instead of x. So let x be equal to 2 cube 3 square 5 power 1 7 power 6. And say t is equal to 3 power 3 7 power 4. So initially the value of answer will be 1 plus 3, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 1 and 1 plus 6. Now we need to modify answer so as to incorporate even t. To do that we will prime factorize t first. So after prime factorizing t we will have 3 cube 7 power 4. So when we find 3 power 3 we need to first remove the contribution of 3 from x. To do that we will just divide answer by 1 plus 2 because previously we had multiplied answer with 1 plus 2 because 3 square contributes 3 we will be dividing by that number. Now after multiplying t with x the new power of 3 will become 2 plus 3 which is 5. So I will multiply 5 plus 1 into the answer. So 1 plus 2 is taken out and I'll be multiplying 1 plus 5. 
So basically, I've accounted for this prime factor 3 in a product xt. Next, for prime factor 7, I will remove its contribution, which is 1 plus 6. And then I will multiply it back 1 plus 4 plus 6, which is 10. So I'll add 10 over here. So as you see, we are modifying the answer as we prime factorize t. So the complexity for this will be log t. And we can do the same thing for removing a number from a product. Say we found the answer for xt. Now say I want to remove t from x. From the product I'm removing t. I can use the same method where I will again prime factorize t, divide the contribution of the prime factor which is already there and multiply back with the updated contribution. So for prime factor 7, after dividing, instead of multiplying by 1 plus 10, since I'm removing, I'll be multiplying by 1 plus 2, where 6 minus 4 will give me 2. So basically, if I'm multiplying a number to an existing product, then modifying my answer can be done in log t. And prime factorizing a number in log t can be done using a method known as sieve. And you can find the link to the method in the description below. Now let's see how we can find the answer for this query u is equal to 6 and v is equal to 7. So for all the nodes in the path from 6 to 7, we need to multiply these values and find the number of factors. We will have two pointers which will be pointing at the starting node initially. These two pointers will denote the answer that we have calculated for the product of all nodes in between these two pointers. So initially we have found the answer for the product 8. Next we will be updating one pointer to the next node in path from 6 to 7. Now we will update our answer so as to incorporate 9. So now the answer will be for product 8 into 9. Now again we will update this pointer to the next node and we will incorporate in a product and update our answer. Next, we will move this pointer to the next node, which will be 3. And so we will update our answer, which includes 7. And finally, we will update this pointer to the last node in the path. And we will update our answer to include 5. So what will be the complexity of this approach? It will be n, where n is the maximum number of nodes which is present in a path log a where a is the maximum value a node can have for each query n log a is still very slow we will need to optimize further note that the queries which are given to us are offline queries meaning that two queries are independent of each other and we can process the queries in any order as we like and in this problem we are just changing the positions of the pointers back and forth so as to include the entire path from u to v. Which brings us to the final optimization, which is Mohs algorithm. We will be using Mohs algorithm to sort the queries and to update these pointers. The complexity before was q and log a for all the queries. Now, after applying Mohs algorithm, the complexity will become q root n log a and this is sufficient to pass the problem. We will now see how we will use most algorithm on trees and see how we can update our pointers so that we can answer every query efficiently. We know how to apply most algorithm on an array. But how do we do it on trees? We will use the Euler path of a tree to convert the tree into an array and we can apply most algorithm on that array. Let's see how we can convert it to an array. First, we will do a DFS traversal on this tree starting from the root node. And we will record the in times and out times for every node. What do I mean by this? Say I have a DFS function where you use the current node and say p is the parent. Before I recurse into child nodes, I will set the start time of this node to be t plus plus. So the start time of u is the time at which we entered node u 
and it will be some value t. So t will be a global value denoting time and we will set the starting time of u to be equal to t and then we will increment t. Then we will visit all the child nodes and at the end of the function we will set the end time of this node. So the end time for u will be equal to t plus plus. So the end time of u will be the current value of t and after setting the end time we will be again incrementing t. So after visiting all nodes in the subtrees of u, we will set the end time of u. For better understanding, let's find the start time and end time of the tree given over here. We will start the DFS from the root node 1. So the start time for 1 will be 1. We will have a global variable called t which was 1 initially. And since we updated the start node of root node, we are better t to be 1 plus 1 which is 2. Now we will traverse the child node of 1 and for node 2 we set the start time. The start time will be equal to current t which will be 2 and we update t to be 3. Now we again go to the child node and the start time of 4 will be 3 and we update t to be 4. Now there are no child nodes of 4 and we reach the end of the DFS function for node 4. So we set the end time for 4 which will be equal to 4 and we again update our value t. We come back to the parent node which is 2, go to the next child node and set its starting time to be 5 and then come back to its child node, set its starting time to be 6, then update its end time to be 7. Go back to the parent. For this parent it is in the end of the DFS function because there are no more child nodes to explore. So we set the start time of 5 to be the current value of t which will be 7 plus 1 8 now we go back to the parent then we go to the next child which is 6 we will update the start time to be 9 and the end time to be 10 we go back to 2 and in 2 we are in the end of the dfs function there are no more child nodes to be explored so we update the end time to be 11 similarly we do the same thing for the node 3 as well so we come to node 3 set its start time to be 12 go to node 7 set the start time to be 13 go to node 9 set the start time to be 14 no more child node so we will set the end time also which will be 15 go back to 7 then come to 10 and set the start time to be 16 and the end time also with 17 go back to 7 no more child nodes to explore so the end time will be 18 come back to 3 end time will be 19 come back to 1 the end time will be 20. So we have calculated the start and end times of all the nodes in a tree. Now let's see how we can convert this into an array. The array form will be this which is shown over here and let's call it an array id. The indexes to the array is starting from 1, 2, 3 and all over to 20 and the indices represent this time. So we started at time 1 and we ended at time 20 and the value of id represents which node were we in at that particular time. So for root node we had marked the start and end time to be 1 and 20. So at position 1 and 20 the value of id will be 1. At time 9 and 10 we were at node 6. So for time 9 and 10 the value of id is 6. So in the code I can write id of t is equal to u and at the end I can write id of t is u. This array now represents the Euler path of this tree. Now before we can apply Mohs algorithm we need to see given two nodes u and v how do you find all the nodes in the path from u and v using this array id. So given two nodes u and v First, we will find the LCA of u and v. We will use the binary lifting method to find the LCA of two nodes in log n time. Let's say u is equal to 3 and v is equal to 10, which will be this node and this node. And we will find all the nodes in the path from 3 to 10. And the LCA of 3 and 10 will be 3. If the LCA of u and v is equal to either u or equal to either v, 
in this case lc of 3 and 10 is equal to 3 then the nodes in my path can be represented by this range start of 3 and start of 10 where 3 is my LCA and which is also equal to one of my nodes and 10 is the other node starting time of 3 is 12 and starting time of 10 node 10 has starting time 16 the range will be 12 to 16 in the ID array and in this range we will only consider nodes which occur exactly once as you see 3 occurs once and 3 is in the path 10 occur once and 10 is in the path 7 occurs once and 7 is also in the path whereas 9 occurs twice but 9 is not in the path why is 9 not in the path because we started at node 9 at time 14 and ended at node 9 at time 15 and between the time 12 and 16 a node should have only started to be in the path of 3 and 10. If a node starts and ends within this interval it means that that node is on the different branch from the path from u to v. Because of the property of DFS, once we visit a node, we discover all its children, come back to that node and then we go to its parent. And because of this property, only elements which occurs once will be in the path of UV. Obviously you can see here, I can end 7 only after I have started 10. I can end 3 only if I have started 7 or if I have started 10. So there is no way I can end 3, end 7 or end 10 without starting 10. So if my LCA is equal to U of V, then my range will be starting of the LCA and the starting time of the other node. Now what if the LCA of U and V are different? So now let's say U is equal to 8 and V is equal to 6. So u is 8 and v is 6. The LC of 8 and 6 will be 2. Which is not equal to u and not equal to v. And let's consider that the starting time of u is less than or equal to starting time of v. In which in this case is true because starting time of 8 which is 6 is less than or equal to starting time of 6 which is 9. The range for which the nodes will lie in the path from uv will be the ending time of u or in this case 8 and the starting time of v which is 6. Because the starting time of u is smaller than that of v, we first visit u. Now once we finish visiting u and all the subtrees under u, we will go back to its parent. Before going back to the parent, we have recorded the ending time which is to be 7. So from that ending time, I will be considering the nodes. So the moment I end at 8, I will go to its parent, I will end 5, go to its parent and obviously because of DFS, I will go to the next child which will be this and the moment I come at 6 I will consider the starting time of 6 and stop the range there that is why we take the ending time of u till the starting time of v the ending time of 8 is 7 and the starting time of 6 is 9 so in this range we have 8 6 and 5 which are in a path and if there were any nodes which occurred twice in this range then we will not consider we will only consider nodes which is occurring exactly once since it would have formed a different branch from our path and observe that the lca is not included in this range because the lca node was started before this range which was 2 and ended after this range which was 11 so to include this lca node i will be also adding the range start time of LCA to start time of 
else here which will be essentially starting at 2 and ending at 2 so given two nodes u and b we can find a continuous range in the array id such that we know the nodes which are in the path from u to v and we can use two pointers to denote that range so for this current example one pointer will be here and the other pointer will be here and all we have to do is we have to apply most algorithm to sort the queries such that these pointers can be updated efficiently and this question boils down to applying most algorithm on the single array note that when the lc is not equal to uv we have this extra range which includes a single element and for this what we do is once we get the answer for this range we will include this element and modify our answer store the current answer to be the queries answer and then remove this element from the answer so that this element is removed and we can again start updating these two pointers also we can have an array called visited where visited of u means u is included in the range exactly once so when we update an element if that element is already visited we unvisit it by removing the element and if the element is unvisited then we visit the element by including the element this way we ensure that we don't include elements which is occurring even number of times and since we have a continuous range of elements for every query we can easily apply most algorithm on this array and solve this problem so here it is guys i hope you've understood the logic behind this solution if you have please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel fluent algorithms see you in my next video